Welcome to episode 527 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Jay. And I'm Glenn. How you going, fellas? Great. Any better, it'd be illegal. Okay, unpack that for me. Why? What? You... <laughs> <laughs> it's sad that you're you're shocked that that level of happiness exists. Well, I mean, like, there's, you know, there's a, there's illegal levels of happiness, but then there are ones that are like, you know, even though they're illegal, I mean, and you know, they maybe become legal one day. I mean, there, there's things that you just you would never want to be doing. I mean, like, you're not fucking, you just you didn't you didn't just come back from like fucking. You know, you're not as happy as someone who just uh, was, de- you know, down for a walk in the in the national forest and um, buried a couple of backpackers. Look, I I do dislike backpackers, and I am fairly chirpy. But, um, <laughs> no, 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 you prefer your fruit unpicked, <laughs> <laughs> just dying on the trees. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I read the wonderful news today that uh, Tyrone Peachy has been linked to Souths, so. Oh wow! That, uh, I did not see that. Yes. In fact, I haven't looked at a single bit of news or anything. So, we'll get, we'll get so I'm, 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 is that I'm going to be absolutely thrilled. Well, look on on the weekend. I think look, I, I'm not sure we'll we'll feel it. I, I think he would he score tr- scored two and let two in. So he was a it was a balanced account for Tyrone Peachy on the weekend. <laughs> Interesting take. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I dare say he's been killing it this year and been one of the critical players for the for the Panthers this season. Yes. And, uh, yeah, he's looking like he's he's, he's got a uh, he's got the inside running to to you know perhaps play a role deep into the finals. Do you know what you sound like there? And look, I'm sure he will. Yeah, you know, he will play a role. But you, you sound right there, and Glennie will back me up on this. Like somebody that's never had Tyrone Peachy play for their team. Yeah, and also glad, also glad of it, and can sort of, and can also sort of have that kind of, that air of. It's this. Weird <laughs> I've never had Tyrone. Fight. I also doubled Dude. down in the fact that I had Tyrone Peachy on my team, and sadly, he was one of our better players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Tigers are one of the ones where he's he has a legacy. <laughs> the Titans and the Panthers are just like he was. This dude. He was <laughs> considered at the Tigers. He was considered elite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's he's getting because he played for Penrith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all he you need. A little taste of, he brought a little taste of the bus back. Yeah, after, Ivan, after Ivan left. Yeah, at this stage on the, we, on the we'd fucking take, bullet train, we take a fucking meth addict that just strolled from one end of Penrith Plaza to the other, and they're like, "Oh, he's been to Penrith. Fucking sign him." So is that like? And then Junior? send him back. Send him back in a couple of years. Oh, it's Dane Laurie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, poor Dane Laurie. Uh, look, he, you know, he's gone back to his happy place, so let's, be, let's be honest. I can't hate on the kid. Oh yeah, you got to be, you got to be, you got to be down pretty bad to 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 be, you know, needing to hate on a fucking football player to get your <laughs> to get your kicks. Funny, you live a fucking full life. Why would you fucking why why would you fucking need to hate on a hate on a footy player to but enrich yourself? Plenty of people do though, Nathan. I don't understand your point. Not me. Yeah, but... well, fucking losers. Yeah. Or, I mean, you like know, you have... or, or podcast host, you know, you shouldn't even hate on podcast hosts if you live a full life. Of course well, it's... Yeah. Let's not hate anybody. Yeah. Of course it's difficult to live a full life when you fucking constantly are shitting through the eye of a needle because your body's fucked up. <laughs> That's just way... Like, oh, yeah. I took a breath. I don't even, oh, I don't, I've got I don't a shit. Even, I, don't, I don't even want to fucking break that down for the listeners. Um... Wow, that's that's super specific. Yeah. Um, now <laughs> I looked in the mirror. Oh, got a shit again. Jesus, um, sp- <laughs> Glenn, come, come on, people's disabilities. Fucking hell! Yeah. I don't, I don't, that's I don't not even the. That's hell. not even the fucking worst of his disabilities. I'm just fucking starting at starting at the bottom, literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of shit, though, Glenny. Did you did you hear that um, there's been some behind the behind the uh, behind the scenes trouble at the at the West Tigers, and uh, you've had Chris Lawrence himself, old Betty White, walked away from the club, uh, and he uh, had a uh, well, obviously like his his entire injury injury history was fucking laid out on past episodes of this show because it was quite the fucking topic 
Yes. Almost all, almost all the time, right? Um, he's no longer part of the club um, after a dummy spit from Chairman Lee. Apparently, when the uh, Tigers were being flogged 74-0 by North Queensland, Lawrence sent him a text along the lines of, you can't be happy with this, question mark. And uh, old fucking uh, Fedora Lee <laughs> took umbrage. Is that a relation of Meadow Lee? He got the shits with the, he got the shits with the text. And so Chris Lawrence has uh, terminated his association with the club. Wow. Which he built almost single handedly, if we're being honest. Oh, that, that, know, that's yeah. a fucking great call, Glennie. That is a great call because if every other fucking front office official of every other club is butter, then that cunt is most <laughs> margarine. Margarine of some description. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Look, at the end of the day, it seems a pretty. The team's getting smashed 74 0 and a club legend in, in his own way. You know, it certainly wasn't aggressive by the sounds of it. Um, you know, and Lee's decided to go and get Crohn's about it. I'll tell you, it's, it's fucking, it's unfortunate. I don't know if if that's the biggest problem he's got where he has to have a dummy spit at a, at a club legend with all the other shit that's going on in this club. Um, oh, but the, I think there'd be targets that he could, uh, he could re- more readily line up. Himself, yes. But also, let, let's let's just unpack that from a cultural point of view. Now, we, we have no idea of the context of their relationship. Maybe the relationship has been rocky. Maybe Lawrence has said some some things um, that he shouldn't have said or, or had spoken up inappropriately, what, it's not whatever his it is. It's not in his fucking nature. You know, and, and maybe it's not like told, he sent him a text. It's not like the text said, you know, listen, you fedora wearing cunt. <laughs> but, uh, fucking, let's not worry listen, about fucking I'm the location of Carmen guess. San Diego. Let's fucking worry about, <laughs> let, let's worry about where the location of the fucking two competition yeah. points is for this fucking team. Yeah. Can, can we please, that. can we please start running that. a football club and not living in constant fear that someone's going to accidentally set off a time machine and zap us all back to 1934 <laughs> and dress like we can fit in instantly? Yeah. Please. Yeah. But even um, if we were lucky enough to get zapped in a time machine, yeah. it's never taken us back to fucking 2005. We'll give exactly. You and since you want to dress like fucking Dick Tracy, why don't you fucking <laughs> investigate what the fuck is going on at this team? But, <laughs> but tell me. I I can't think of how that's a positive culture when someone who had like hang on it, it, let me does, stop it you doesn't right say are you insinuating that the culture at the West Tigers is anything but positive? I, I fucking I, very. I'm suggesting say. that appears to be toxic because he has the CEO's mobile number. It's it's not like he said he went and stole it out of someone else's phone <laughs> or he guessed it or he broke into his office and and stole it out of his fucking Rolodex. He he's got the CEO on his phone, which which leads you to believe that they've they've texted each other or called each other before. Yeah, there's and, an open line of communication there. And to be so fucking petty, degree. if that's the reason, man, that 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 then gives us the clearest insight we have ever publicly had as to what the cultural issues are with the West Tigers. And there is an old fucking saying: "A fish rots from the head." Yep. Sometimes That's, the fish that is from the asshole, rotten, and the asshole is at the chair of the board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. All right, now, um, Jay, I believe you have a a, a, a chance to, to take a swipe at, at unions again, but it's, and it's specifically the RLPA. Um, tell me about. It. I haven't seen the news, so look, you have to you have to tell let, to me like I'm three. Let me preface this: I don't hate workers. <laughs> After all the fucking DMs, in fact, <laughs> in fact, I am so fucking pro worker that what I encourage everybody to do is actually do do some fucking research on what they're getting um, versus what they pay for and what they could get if they spent the exact same amount of money elsewhere. Um, you know, yeah, I so he's pro yeah. worker but not pro union. <laughs> No. He's, he's, so, so your 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 assumption that he's anti-union is one hundred percent true. One hundred percent correct. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad you said that because I mean the amount of people who fucking send me messages will go out. <laughs> Stepdad really hates unions, and I'm like, yeah, fucking oath. <laughs> and it, and it it's on, it's only because you know they that they're they're essentially in it for themselves, just like any major corporation is. A union is there to benefit 
the people that are running the union. At the end of the day, they put they can put on this big front that they're their four members, uh, but who gets looked after first? Who gets looked after fucking first? Anyway, uh, but the RLPA uh, and and their very impressive and and tactically sound leader uh, have have taken another step in their action over the NRL. Um, so apparently this week, uh, the, the media ban is still in place and the players are now going to cover up the NRL logo on their jerseys. So I'm not quite sure what the fucking go is here. Um, does he think that people are going to turn their TV on at the same time that they watch the rugby league every fucking week to watch the teams that they know are involved in the National Rugby League run out and then suddenly be shocked and confused and wonder if they are actually watching the National Rugby League because they can't see the NRL logo on the fucking jerseys. It... Yeah, yeah. The, 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 this, this this one's a weird one because it doesn't really like. I guess it's some sort of form of like a silent process protest sort of thing, but still, you know, and it's, and and the media, the media are the only ones at the moment that are losing out here because you can see why the the, the quality of the content, particularly on those the shit rag shows like three sixty and that are starting to have to churn out. Yeah. It's basically they were they were ninety percent opinion anyway, <laughs> you know it yeah. seemed, but now they're now they're like for all in opinion and it's all and it's all shit. And there was a glaring example of it last night when um, they had like Danny Danny Widler had a sit down interview with DCE that was done on the Mondays and Tuesdays when players can do the media, obviously. And they <laughs> and they had a sit down talking to him about the milestone game this weekend, and they literally showed clips from it, and then said. This is a travesty. This media band of players are doing. We would have loved to have heard from him all this week about his milestones. They're dumb motherfuckers. You literally just, <laughs> literally just seen a fucking lengthy sit down interview. I, uh, that he did. We did. We did. We did, we did fucking. Yeah, I mean, we, he didn't talk to you. Now on on this on the, the same, problem on the same vein that I I get the shits with people being fucking disingenuous in certain organisations about who benefits in them. Um, fuck it. It's been funny to see all of the sleeper agents that the media have fucking activated to try and yes. swing public opinion, public opinion yeah. against it. Like there are so many fucking Twitter people who all seem to have some sort of association with gambling companies that are <laughs> all of a sudden tweeting out about what, a, and it's exactly what you said there, Nate. Um, like there, there was one in particular I saw after Origin about how, you know, oh, such a shame. Cody, Cody Walker's friends and family will never get to hear how he felt oh, after his yeah. uh, after his Origin thing. Why, why don't somebody think of the families? Think of the families. And then you go to the cunt's bio and he's like a gambling company ambassador. <laughs> like, so how much do you fucking care about families, bud? Mm-hmm. Like, what are we thinking and about? I care a lot as, as long as they're winning. <laughs> and, not to me- and not to mention, they actually, because they couldn't interview players, with, um, in the case of Bradman Best, who they interview after the game, his fucking dad and mum. And so I think the families, I think the families heard well, a lot when the player went up to the fence and literally spoke to them face to fucking face the after the game. If, if you're actually friends and family with Bradman Best, give him a fucking phone call the next day. You'll get to hear exactly how he went. You got it's the access. It's not. It's exactly the opposite of friends and family that don't get to hear that shit. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, this shit, and I, I am enjoying how fucking triggered the media is getting. Um, and it's funny they're trying to push the narrative now uh, that it's um, that the it's all uh, Clint Newton's fault. Oh, you know me, I love a bit of fucking Newton bashing. Um, but essentially they're saying that the way that it's his his way to muzzle 485 players is by saying that they all have one voice. Yeah. And no one dares step out of line. And also a voice of and 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 the way the way that you know they can attack him as well is that because he's not a current player anymore. Yep. 
and so he's not someone that they're going to have to blow potentially in three weeks' time down yep. the track. Yeah. You know, while you know, while they, you know, they lean their team in the, in the finals or you know some sort of shit like that. Um, they can easily just portray him as you know, yeah, that's this it. other guy that's an other to the actual players themselves, and so the players are victims, but also the media, the media themselves are victims, and the families of the players, obviously, like you mentioned before, but um, and they can put it all on him as a, as, as a singular point of uh, attack, but um, like this will all resolve itself anyway over the next few weeks, and it could, it could have honestly, it could have been done, probably without, you know, this sort of level of shit but i mean i guess when the when the main when the main victim in quotes of the action is the media obviously they're gonna fucking blow it you know they're gonna blow it up the, and, what... and the interesting the interesting thing here is they're saying um and and this is all like you said just shit from the the talk shows on on fox but uh Volandis has apparently come out and said i'll tell you what i'll get andrew abdo and i'll pull him out of the negotiations mm. If you cunts pull fucking Newton out of the negotiations, and I, Lord and Saviour Volandis, will sit in a room with however many players you want, and we'll all nut out a deal together. And then Clint can come back, and if you still want him to be your representative of that deal, then then he can be your representative. But we don't want him involved in making the deal. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, so. and that's and that's just Volandi. Ta- I mean, the thing, the the the, to- the sort of head kicking tactics that you need to do to. To, to be the steward of, you know, r- horse racing. Yep. Well, know, it's, it's, a different, easy. it's easy yeah. with jockeys, isn't it? They're not that physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. I've had a choke. <coughs> That's like fucking brilliant. It's like a scene out of the fucking Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like going into fucking Willy Wonka's fucking factory and, and, expect, and expecting someone to fucking stop you eating the chocolate. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's funny. Well, sit down, you little orange cup. <laughs> Luke Brooks looks up sad. <laughs> Oompa, loompa, uh, doompa, <laughs> Uh, right, so um, the only uh, the only other thing, and, and we were talking about this before we were recording, is like the low hanging fruit that it, we would have been uh, had, had we still been doing the lines at the start of the episodes. And uh, Jamin Salmon is uh, signing with the uh, Bulldogs for next season. Um, there's some strange. I mean, the, the amount of plays that these cunts are buying is still is, is still fucking incredible. And while they're not like the necessarily the top dollar kind of players that they that, you know highlighted last year's spending spree, guys like you know like Salmon and Taffy, but then they bought Liam Knight, mm. immediate immediate transfer. So that's a strange one because it's not like he's a good player. Well, just like an incredible gun. He's not a culture guy because I mean, fuck you know, big on himself. I mean, he's <laughs> he's had his past, and you know the fact that they've got so many they've got so many injuries that are sort of starting to turn around and come back. It just it just seems strange, but um, yeah, the weak gutted dog joins the kennel. All that and more this week in league. What are we gonna take? Is, uh... <sighs> what do we got? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Moylan. Matt Moylan is uh. We gotta go to France, maybe. Move to Super League. Taking the old, um, the old red wine, Jim Jim, mm. spot at Catalan, yeah. And who who they got now? Who they got now? It's fucking killing it. Brady Croft. It's not, it's not Brady. It's Brady Croft, is it? Yeah. <laughs> he's it? not in. So, in no, he's not in Catalan. Yeah. He's not in Catalan. No. I have no fucking idea. I think he's playing for Honestly. Salford. He's, he's doing the Salford, is he? The old Salford. Fuck, <laughs> those are good old days, Glenny. Yeah, fuck him, <laughs> Salford. Um. Then there's the other news. Um. You know the the Jerome Luai saga. What's the saga there? Is it a saga? Oh, it's just that uh, again. It's a, a allegedly dropping end bombs at another. Did he go to fucking Crichton's wedding? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the uh, the the dogs have offered ridiculous money to him. Um, he's had a split with his management last week, but the then then the the. The change in the direction of the narrative is that, oh, well, yeah, the dogs are interested and other clubs would be if he wasn't polarising. Oh, okay. So, Meaning, what, if, he, uh, if, he wasn't, if he wasn't brown-skinned, oof. is that what you're saying? Wow. Uh, 
<laughs> that's what the media. That's what that's what the media. The, 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 this is exactly what the media are talking about. That's all code. Well, but essentially, what they're saying is that if he's a, he, he does he does he does he does he listens to fucking hip hop and fucking and acts you know acts up on Instagram and fucking all the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, and on exactly. field, he, and on and on field, he fucking struts around when he scores a try, or when a teammate and scores a try, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he make he makes fun of people that have nine to five jobs. Yeah, sort of thing. So yeah, ex- exactly. But um, they're 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 essentially saying, uh, you know, oh, could you imagine Jerome Luai in a Roosters jumper? Could you see him playing under Ricky down in Canberra? And I I fucking love that how they talk about playing under Ricky, like that's the fucking gold standard. You know, yeah, that. Oh, like the, I, th- I thought that was just, I thought that was like a joke example. Like, yeah, obviously he's staying at Penrith because you, could you imagine that scenario? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, how, that's how normal people would see that. Yeah. Um, but they they've done their usual uh, Ricky filating, trying mm. to talk about how he's. Um, no, I don't forget, forget he's got yeah. all his mates in the media and shit. Ma- master of fucking discipline, but. Uh, I think he's. Less, I think he's, he's. He's less desirable because he's like super desirable to Canterbury. Yep. Less desirable to other clubs. The reason why is because State of Origin proved that outside the Penrith system, he's half the player. Mm-hmm. But the Bulldogs are insistent on Replicating slowly, the, piece by the piece, Penrith importing the entire Penrith system. So eventually, if he sucks next year, he'll give it three years and he'll probably... Yeah. I mean, I think with Birdo there, he'd probably be comfortable enough. But, you know, with Birdo, I mean, fuck, just the fact that you can fucking put him in six at Dogs and then have that set up with kick out to his left... I and, mean that alone would make him fucking instantly comfortable, surely. And, and Crichton and Berto and the week got a dog. Oh wow! And Imagine. look, yeah. yeah, look, I I would not begrudge him at all. And and I made this very clear after the second title. Anyone that wants to now go and and fucking money chase after they've mm-hmm. bought us two rings, fucking more power to you. Chase chase the almighty dollar. You have done your fucking job. You are forever a club legend. Because really, that's the point. That's that's at the end of the day, that's the issue at hand. It's not that yeah. you know the dogs are interested and this guy's interested and this team could be interested. It's the fact is that now he can get X amount of money and the yeah. club can't afford that. You know, with the other guys that they want to retain. And I it's mean, this, he, this thing of you know he's either got to take a haircut on what he could get elsewhere. Yeah. To to stay, you know, where he's comfortable and and where there will be a certain level of success. Do or, you think they know he's going? That's why Dane Laurie's coming back. Um, I I'm not sure Laurie because Dane Laurie is just an instant in fucking six. equal fucking. I I, I no no just because, I agree just with because you, he's, 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 he's not going to play one. Him. He's not going to play one, is he? Well, no, why, he why would he be coming well, back if he's, if he's not going to play? Reggie's because depth. playing reserve grade for Penrith is better than having anything to do with the West Tigers. Thank you for being the cunt that you always are, but I was and, actually trying to ask an actual and, question. Well, I'm seri- okay, I'm I'll give you, I'll give you a serious, serious answer, Glennie. The serious answer is he can go down to the fucking shops in his Penrith jersey without <laughs> getting fucking bashed in the newspapers <laughs> for doing it if he's actually at um, Penrith again. The, the, the back line in Penrith had a shake-up, you know, and there will be spots up for grabs. So if Dano thinks he's good enough to come on in and get into that back line, fucking more power to him. More power to him, especially uh, now with the gaping void that fucking Peachy leaving. Exactly, is going to open up. You know, and and allegedly <laughs> there's there's nothing Dano likes more than Con- congratulations. Slip- you said that with a straight face, Nathan. Slipping into a nice warm peach hole. Oof. Let's leave it there. A nice warm peach hole. They, yeah. I feel like that's the title of the episode. <laughs> a nice warm. Let me just write that down. <laughs> A nice, warm peach hole. <laughs> Round 22, coming up. Let's go with the uh, Warriors this week. They get a bye. The first game is Thursday night. The Brisbane Broncos take on the Sydney Roosters at the convenient time of exactly the same time as the Matildas are playing at Lang Park, I think. So, um, awesome planning there, fucking <laughs> for PVL. Uh, you've done it again. The Broncos. What do we got here? Jesse Arthur's out. Marty Tapao's out. And Xavier Wilson out. Um, so Mariner, Flegler, and Piakura come in. Uh, Roosters. Wong is out. Radley comes into lock. Nathan Brown goes lock the bench. Who you got? Oh, if the Broncos are serious, they should win this game easily. Roosters were better last week, but... Um... 
yeah, I, I think the Broncos are, you know, they're dead keen, I feel, and very committed to, to washing away the stink of, of last year's fade out. And, and this is the time where they really do need to be stepping up and beating. You know, they, they should beat the Roosters. They're a better side at this stage than the Roosters are and should handle them easily. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I would, I would agree. I don't think there's, there's a lot to say. I mean, the Roosters, the, I mean, it, it was, you know, from the Roosters, a Roosters fans' perspective, if they, they, I'm sure they would be happy with the way they went about their business last week. But, you know, not a, not a renowned defensive powerhouse that they were up against there and um, mm. they exploited some pretty fucking ordinary defense in the middle um, and the edges. So, yeah, they did well to finish it off and they'll have to finish all their chances off exactly like that again if they'd give themselves a chance, but I just don't, I don't think that they've, uh, I don't think they're built for it this year. That's I it. agree. Exactly. Friday, a pub slot game comes from Tamworth where the West Tigers take on the South Sydney Rabbitohs. The Tigers, uh, Talao's out, Wakeham's out, the Silver out, Seafarth out. So in comes Charlie Staines. Remember him? He's the play for Penrith. Brooksy, Will Smith, Bloor, and uh, Junior Tupo goes from wing to centre. The Rabbits, they welcome back, well, at least at this stage, Latrell Mitchell. Um, Taffy's out, uh, Talis Duncan's out, so Latrell comes back in along with Jed Cartwright. Mm-hmm. Tigers could really do manly a fucking solid if they could get some fine way to win this game. Lady. It's, in, it's in Tamworth. I expect us to get smashed like a Tars. Have you done? Have you guys done the Tamworth? Is it your game? That's usually it's, you. You, yeah. you guys are traditionally. How do you normally go there? I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, neither can I. But if it, I mean, you, usually you've been shit. So like, it just goes. Played, yeah, before. I was going to say we've played there a couple of times over the last couple of years, and in those couple of years, we've invariably been shit. So I'm going to make an assumption that so we've been shit to, in Tamworth. So what you're saying is it's impossible to draw a line though to like Scully Park being like a bad home ground for you. No, it's just, no, you're no, just no, a just bad, a bad just, club generally. Doesn't matter. They could play in fucking <clears throat> local sand pit and still be fucking horrible. Look, Brooksy's Brooksy's back though, so I mean, this could do, this could very well be like a sixty-six point situation in your favour. Loss. Oh, okay. Um, no, we we do also have a habit of players coming back from injury or suspension or, or being, you know, questioning the media, um, and then the next week they play the Tigers and play out of their skin. So I would expect a big game from Latrell Mitchell. Eight, yeah, well, no, eight dollars sixty to a dollar seven. Do you do you really think though that Latrell is going to turn all of these little cracks around in a week? No, he's going to have an impact. Know, Make honestly, no mistake about that. But I mean, their defense has been their defense has been so shit. Mm. Yeah, and that's not and it's, and it's not like all these tries were fucking. They they got through the first line barely, and then because they didn't have Latrell Mitchell at fullback, they scored. They've been, yeah, roundly pretty fucking shit in defence by their standards. Um, so look, you've actually talked yourself down so hard. This is one of the first games I can ever remember where you haven't come up with some bullshit grandiose scheme about how the West Tigers are going to be thirteen plus, <laughs> which means it must be bad. All right, I take I take your point. I'm gonna I'm picking up what you're putting down, Glennie. The West Tigers are going to get a sixty burger put on them at this point. Um, you've heard it first it, from Glennie. It, it, it he has a, the resignation tone in his voice says it all. All the um, all the shit about this South one. All I want to talk about is the the Adam Reynolds move. Oh, so talking the, about what a bullshit! I mean, how they how they fucked up letting him go? How they how they fumbled that and. And how Latrell's uh, return is saving Lachlan Ilias. Yeah, let's let's be let's be cl- you know clear here. The they that we're talking about here are the media people that are starved of anything else to Correct. talk about. So yeah, I, I was going to say who is that? Yeah. Well, I don't think anyone at South is saying that. Yeah, I don't well, think so no, either. No one at South is saying that. Mm. <laughs> as as good as Reynolds is going, I still feel like South, with one eye on the on the long term future, I think. They are still probably comfortable comfortable with their with their decision. If if he had stayed at South, he actually would have played finals last year, and would have got fucking snapped in half. So, no, they made the right move. Well done. Uh, in this case, though, the, yeah, the Rabbitohs, you know, not a not 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 a massive flogging. Uh, I say like high thirties to low teens. 
is the kind of is the kind of bracket I'm looking at for scores. Do you reckon? Do you reckon? Yeah. Do you reckon the like West will like score a thirty eight, like a thirty eight, twelve, thirty eight, fourteen oh, situation? Okay, yep. Yep, yeah, yep, 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 yeah, okay. something like that. Yeah. Yep. Because the thing, this thing, the the Rabbits' defense has been fucking shit. And so, if the West Tigers could actually complete some of the some of the sort of breaks that they made, like I mean, admittedly, it was because you know Raul Arwa was standing like on the fuck, you know, in the middle of the field instead of on his wing. But <laughs> if you if they could if they could get some of those sorts of things and convert some of those, you know, yep. there's there's points to be had against the Rabbits. But um, yeah, just a matter of whether the Tigers can find them, I guess. And I don't think they're going to find enough, no matter what happens, to get the win. And this is the return bout. What was it that that was the night that we were um, night I was down watching um. Nas and, and Wu Tang down in Sydney. I think it was like twenty nil or something, wasn't it, Glenny? That game. It was like it was a weird one. Like that was like six nil, six nil or eight nil for like the whole game, and then South Sydney yeah. pulled away a little bit at and the end. Right at the back end. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, the Storms take on the Eels down at uh, Marvel Stadium again, and uh, the Storms uh, without Remus Smith, Justin Ollum, Big Nelson, and Tarek Sims. Uh, replacing them comes in uh, Marion Seva, Young Tonema Payer, Eliasa Katoa, and Tyron Wishart. Which, which ones of those are out through injury and which ones are out through Bellamy? <clears throat> well, I don't actually know off the top of my head. I'm assuming that Nelson's probably suspended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't, yeah, I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, the Eels. Sean Lane is out. Joey Lussick comes in. Andrew Davey moves from bench to second row to replace Sean Lane. Storms. No way the Storm... Shocked last week. Yeah, no way they played that start. bad two weeks, in a, two weeks yeah. in a row. The worry is, though, that last week, the, like the, the catalyst oh, the catalyst for them losing the, the upper hand in that game was when Nelson rotated off. Yeah. Then they had the sin bin, which really, which buried them and to an extent with, you know, which they couldn't overcome. Um, so uh, going the whole game without him, you know, I don't know. The eels it's must it's a must win game for the eels. They all are they all are for the eels at this point because they're you know on the you know bottom end of, you know out, just out of the eight. Or they're actually in eighth at the moment. Sorry. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to back the storm at home. Yeah, I think Melbourne get them. Yep. The Raiders take on the Knights in Canberra. Uh, unchanged lineup from uh, last week, and the Newcastle Knights they are they are without Daniel Saifidi. Brody Jones comes in. Jacob Saifidi moves to the front row from the bench to replace his brother. Knights surprising surprising performance last week. Mm. The Raiders. Honestly, I don't think it was. You know, they certainly weren't disgraced because I think the I think the Warriors are a far better side than they are. Um, so if to you know pull it back and to get it to Golden Point at the end there, with a kick to you know the opportunity to win it. Yep. Yeah, you know, decent form. Yeah, Raiders. Decent form line from both of uh, them. I don't know. The Raiders have had a few performances this year which sort of defies their their position of fifth on the ladder, but they're serious about. Potentially being even even potentially a top four side, uh, results going their way, and if if they play well to to close out the season, they they really should handle the Knights. Although again, the the Knights the Knights have had some some solid performances as well. Like they they mm. played a good eighty minutes of football to beat Melbourne last week. Like don't get me wrong, Melbourne were far from their best, but mm. you know, no, um, I agree one, with you. This one's shaping up to be a good contest. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of it's going to come down to who gets ascendancy early. And um, just because Ricky Stewart's an absolute fucking cunt, I'm tipping Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> like Cam- Canberra in Canberra, it's that time of year. Yeah. And and what you said is correct. I mean, like if they, because of their for and against, they can't drop games, even though they've got a relatively <laughs> lofty position on the table at the moment. Yep. Two two losses and then two wins from a team under them and they're, and they're gone. They're gone. That's so, um, and and just just by nature of that four and against differential, so uh, it's must win for them. Knights must, I mean, must win for them as well. I guess I mean if they want to stay, you know, say give themselves a chance to make the finals. But uh, by basis of Canberra in Canberra, that's what I'm doing. The uh, Saturday afternoon game, the Dragons take on the mighty Manly Seas Eagles. Uh, the Dragons are without Moses Umbai. 
and they bring in uh, someone by the name of Connor Connor Muleisen. So he's he's got a good old German sounding name. <laughs> um, so I'm sure he's I'm sure he's a proud son of the fucking the region. Uh, the manly <laughs> side, uh, Paseca's injured. Uh, Aloye injured, um, so Sipley and Bullimore come straight back through. Matt Lodge predictably moves to start the game after his um, big performance from the bench last week. Um, fucking Aloye, I mean, the guy's got some fucked ideas, but there's no denying the fucking toughness. In that game last week, he dislocated, his shoulder came out three times. Mm. And, he, and he just jammed it back in and kept playing. And in the last time, the reason when he went off is... Because they couldn't put it back in, so he had to go in and they had to go into the sheds and they had to, you know, actually sit down and try and, you know, jam it back in there. So, and and apparently there's another game. It's, it's just it's just been a recurring thing this season. And there was another game earlier in the season where it just come out and he just sort of, you know, just jam it back in, kept playing. So, I mean, he's a he's a cooked cunt, but he's a fucking tough cunt. Um, so, has there that. been anything more come out about Matt Lodge and his contract? Last he's a tra- he's trained and trial, so we got to pay. Like they, someone was making us trying to make a case saying that oh, that's like unders or whatever. There is well, it, it's been but it's no- been reported that that essentially the NRL have looked at that and said, well, no, he, he has he has a certain value as a player, and that value is six hundred thousand mm. dollars. So so what you're doing is taking the piss. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like anything's happened from it because yeah, they're paying as a train and trial. They're paying him basically a thousand bucks grand, a, a grand a week. That, yeah. Exactly. So what what I'd read was that they they can't you know make them pay him any more than that. But if they select him for every week they select him, the NRL can levy a salary cap implication on that. Yeah. Right. So I haven't just seen the other thing. Else yeah, about yeah, that. it's weird because I mean, because he had, he was paid out in full by the Roosters as well. So it, you know, I, you know, they, you know, there's a way of looking at it that could be like that. You know, they're they're taking the freight for it's uh, hundred grand too. No, yeah, it's, because, it's because, not about because they that. did pay. Because, no, no, but that's that's the argument that you could uh, that Manly could make in return and say, look, he's, he's he was on six hundred grand this year. He's been paid the paid out the six hundred grand. You know, by the Roosters. So essentially, it's just like a you know. So he has. Re- you're saying he's received the value. Yeah, like a team, yeah. like 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 Woodsy, for example. Like we're not paying him a fucking dime. The Dragons are paying all of it, and so like it's. So, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of Woodsy, and I'm, and I'm not, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Woodsy as a bloke. He seems like a good bloke, but as a player, zero, and Lodge as a bloke, zero, zero fan of that. But so well, getting that, them both for a grand a week is pretty good value, and really. that no, that's that's a good, a good conversation. You know, so Woods Woods a salary. Is sitting yeah. on someone's salary cap. Yeah, dragons. Matt Lodge's salary is sitting on no one's salary cap. Yeah, but if the Roosters paying him out, I mean that must be yeah, that, something, right? That, that has to count it. Yeah, like has the match payments come off their hours, salary but, cap. Yeah. If they've paid him out within the conf- within the, the contract period, it still has to count on the Roosters' salary cap. Has to. Yeah, and like the and the, yeah. and the the match payments we the match payments we throw his way have to count us as well. But I mean, yeah, they do. You know, but th- but this the end is, of season is going to be like ten grand. So this is esen- essentially the Al- the Aldi version of the the Mark Gasnier rules. Yeah, I guess that you can't you can't get a player for for so far under. Yeah, but tell me tell me that Gasnier shit wasn't fucking planned from the year two 100%, years before. One hundred percent. That was the absolute fucking. That was that was almost as bad as fucking the Melbourne Storm shit, and yeah. it's never fucking spoken of no. ever. It wasn't even looked at. Fucking dodgy um, as the um, dragons are cunts. Dragons are massive cunts. Uh, this game milestone game, three hundredth game for Daily Cherry Evans, and it's also one hundred games for Lachlan Croker, who's managed to amass um, you know, a reasonable career for himself after three fucking ACLs. The first of which was done when he was fourteen years old. And was getting it fixed on the public health system, and had to wait a year before he actually got fucking operated on. Um, he's a great bloke and a great a great club guy. I mean, he's not he's not my first cho- choice of, of hooker for the side, but he's definitely one of those glue fucking guys that you need in your side. He's just such a great bloke and such a great a great team player. Um, so yeah, I want a successful game for both of them. If Interesting parents, bit of trivia: if his parents worked harder, he'd have private health, and he'd probably be much more of an athlete. Well, yeah. I mean, well, you know, maybe he could have hit up his fucking uncle or whatever, you know, for a, 
for a bit of fucking scratch. <laughs> but, um, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe you could, you know, I mean, Canberra were paying them over the cap in I those could, days too. I could just imagine fucking Uncle Jared bursting into tears and telling him, I'm not an ATM. <laughs> you scored a try in my uh, milestone round. <laughs> now, um, uh, interesting bit of trivia that I found out today, that uh, Daly, when he brings up his 300 games, he's the only player in the NRL to hit 300 games and play them all in the same position. Wow. Think about that. It's fucking mind-boggling when you think about it. Not really. But you think, of, well, no, like, let's say, okay, well, let's say Cameron Smith played fucking 400 and whatever. Yep. But he would have started off the bench. Yeah. He, he started his first game, he was in the halves, and then, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that was, yeah, so for 300 games to go through, I mean, you so even had guys like long, long careers like there, Jamie Lyon. And, is that he is the least versatile player to ever oh, clock up fuck. 300. No, he fucking Dumb. jumped into first grade and never fucking, oh, fucking jumped into days. first grade, never, never least, left. Least versatile. Cemented okay. his position, got Kill his opportunity, straight Even- from Reggie's, cemented his position, never relinquished, never had to be pushed around to um, to another position to accommodate someone else. Um, it's crazy. You think of like, like long, like, you know, players that had long careers like... Even a guy like, say, like Steve Matai, for example, you go, obviously fucking centre. Yeah, but he played some games at 5'8 when, you know, injuries struck and they, you know, they shifted things around. And like Beave was all, you know, every, I mean, he you know, played games in second row and yeah. centre and fucking like two, two extremely versatile players. Play anywhere. Crucial. Crucial in any squad. What are you talking about? To be able to cover multiple positions. Well, <sighs> you don't have to, though, do you? If only you there was a position that, on the rugby league field called. Because that's the other. Because that's the other thing about Daly as well. I mean, he's played fucking about 99.8% of his career injury-free as well. Fucking durable, incredible player. Uh, great milestone game. Never lost a milestone game either as well, which is interesting. He's won every single one, uh, every 50 game to 100 game. So um, another one coming up. Despite the fact that the Dragons, it's the bogey ground. It's, a, it's Manly's number one bogey ground in the history of the league. They never fucking win this game. Injuries. To two to two uh, starting props, but despite all that, because like Lenny so rightly said, the dragons are cunts. <laughs> we're going to see it. We're going to see a uh, another uh, incredible performance from uh, DCE as the uh, the the triple century of DCE and uh, Manly. Do you hit the twenty six plus? If you win this week? No. Well, we'll be one. We'll be one point out, but. Oh, actually, yeah. no. If no, if the Tigers can get the upset over the, the Rabbits, I think we will go in because I think the other results are probably going to go. I think if the Storm beat the Eels as we expect, they'll yep. stay on twenty four. Yep. If the if the Tigers can get the Rabbitohs, then they stay on twenty four, and then if we get the win over um yeah okay. the, the Dragons, then we'll go we'll jump up into on the twenty five. So that's that's how it is at the moment at this stage of the season. We're looking at the Sharks going backwards, Canberra with their shit differential. And Parrot and South Sydney being inconsistent. And yep. so those four teams have to win their games. We obviously have to win all our games. And then, you know, there's a chance. There's a chance, though. Because the, the draw of some of these teams, they're coming up against each other quite a lot as well. So um, we shall see. Yep. The Panthers take on the Sharks in Penrith. Spencer Lanyu is out. Luke Garner is out. Matt Eisenhuth and Zach Hosking go in. The shark side, let's see what they did. Okay, so so Colcoon and Fanukan, the cunts who injured Paseca, are out. Wade Graham and uh, Talakai are in. Cameron McInnes goes from bench to lock. Panthers by fifty. Yeah, can't it, even, they can't can't even beat teams outside the top eight now. Absolute fucking cooked team, and they're just going to take the blueprint developed by fucking patent pending by by the Harvard scientists. And they are just going to run fucking Cleary <laughs> and it's supported by fucking Yo. And he's going to throw passes out to fucking, to, <coughs> excuse me, to Toto. And these cunts on the right hand side defense, or left hand side defense of the Sharks, are not going to have a fucking clue what to do with any of it. Yeah, that's about sums it up. Yeah. And, I, and, 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 less, and and given that they've got Fanukin out and, they, and these grub cunts out of the side, I think Fanukin's gone for the season, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, so yes. he's in, yes. yes, he is, yep. Oh. So he is a 
like you know for that club he's one of the guys that took them from being shit again yeah. to being a top eight side again yep and so you know without his influence in the side I think it's it's uh, nothing great for them at all um, without him in the side the opposition players aren't going to be fucking injured by you know modified hip drops so the the Panthers are going to need to have 16 HIAs category ones for these cuts to have a chance to come back after what's going to be done to them by half time. <laughs> God damn. Down, down, yeah, Cronulla. Uh, said it better than I ever could. <laughs> down, 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 Cronulla. I'll tell you. They'll be, staying e- on 20, they'll be staying on 26, and so we should get we should jump them next week. <laughs> the, e- the easiest fucking job on this podcast is your team playing someone that Manly played the week before. <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> Oh. Sit back and feel the G's. Oh, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm in the podcast union. I'm gonna do fuck all and get paid. Oh, I'm, look, I'm looking after you, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> the doggies take on the dolphins. Uh, this one's happening up in Bundaberg. Um, doggy side. Okay, fuck me. There's a list of. There's a list of changes. Uh, Perham's out. Alamotti's out. Skelton's out. Ockenbaugh's out. Harrison Edwards out. In comes Braden Burns, Josh Adokar, Sexy Boy, Kikau, and Jacob Preston. So, Avarillo is going to go from half back to full back. Fuck. Flano Jr. is going from hooker to bench. Raymond Fatala Mariner is going front row to lock. So, he actually retained his position after, and he actually won from his industrial action of not wanting to play prop and only doing one hit up for one meter in the first half. He's, he's been switched to lock, so he actually got what he wanted in the end. Um, Pangai Jr. goes second row to front row. Um, Corey Waddell goes lock to bench. And Reed Marnie benched hooker. Dolphins. A few changes there too. Uh, Graham Stone and uh, Katoa out. Tessie New, Jeremy Marshall King and Josh Kerr in. Cody Nikarima goes from fullback to 5'8". Uh, the Hammer goes from centre to fullback. Val Meninga goes from wing to centre. Milford goes from 5'8 to bench. And Kenny Bromwich bench to lock. That's a lot of words there for a game that's really... You know, the steam's gone out of the Dolphins now. The doggy's just fucking disastrous. For the sake of Glennie and, you know, trying to get some sort of, you know, race at the bottom happening, I'm going Dolphins by plenty. Yeah, I, mean, I think the Dolphins will get them regardless. Can Dolphins make the eight? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, technically, yeah. yeah. 22. one win out. Well, that's the fun. That's the funny thing. I mean, like it obviously it depends on the ladder, the ladder predictor, and everything like that, and who they're playing in the run back, and how many easy games they've got. Mm. But mathematically, at this stage, yes, there's definitely enough teams playing each other above them I, to sort of split the the, the, the cannibalise points of each other. I have if they were to win every game, they would get through. I have them finishing ninth. Yeah. How on funny. and and not making it on four and against by a fair margin. Yeah, and that's and at the uh, moment that is a problem for me. They differential at negative ninety one. Yeah, which is one of the worst in the comp. So that's it, and um, and that's the same. That's the saving grace for for the Tigers at this point. If they can find a way to jag two wins, then they there's no chance of getting the the spoon because they've got such a massive lead and for and against on the dogs. Although it's it's probably time to redo the the ladder predictor. Because oh, you're, you're, you're serving up old ones. I thought you were doing it fresh. Well, no, making up something fresh for us every week. That was that was what I had. Um, as as of last time. So who, okay. who did we have? Raiders, Raiders, Knights, Raiders, um, Dragons, Manly, Panthers, Sharks, Dolphins, Dogs. Yeah, see, th- this is that sort of shit in the season. Like the the Dolphins are currently sitting thirteenth. Yeah, they have a win, takes them to tenth. Yeah, one and this win. Is the thi- and this is the thing with last week as well. I mean, you, there's no way you would have had Manly over the Sharks either. Um, in the predictor, there's no way. Raiders versus Tigers, Eels versus Dragons, the Rabbits over the Sharks, Dolphins over the... See, the, yeah, and again, the Dolphins are 11th on the ladder, the Knights are 12th. Um, yeah, there's Warriors over the Titans. Roosters, Manly. Beat them last time. Yep. Yeah, Sharks, they'll probably beat the Titans because they're shit. Or will they, though? Fuck, Warriors have got a good run home, hey? Yeah, yeah. They've got a fucking good run home. Yeah, I reckon they're pretty much home at this point. Yeah, they are. 
I think they only need probably two wins to sort of guarantee it, and I think they've got, you know, a few more in them. Well, see, the Dolphins do play the Tigers. The 19th of August. So that's winnable for both teams, though. Really, you know, honestly, and it the depends Bulldogs, who the... the... Bulldogs still have a buy, so effectively they're actually six points in front of us. Oh, really? Okay. Well, in that case, you fuck, Lenny. Sorry. I tried to yeah. give you some hope there, mate, but... Nah. All hope is lost. Oh, well, mate. You had a good run. No, no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, fuck here. See, um, round twenty six, Dolphins v Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys, I mean, Cowboys. Cowboys win. They're in fourth. Yeah. Um, no, it's not that amazing. They're in fifth if they lose. Why do I think that was more? Which is which is quite remarkable though if you look at their pre-origin form and position. I mean, it's been a solid run. The form from the Cowboys to ramp up to get to finish potentially in top four. Yeah. Anyway, so the the Sharks, the Titans, uh, the Knights beat the Dragons. Yeah, there's and there's so many fucking games where the last couple of games are against shit teams. Yeah. Yeah, and the Dolphins have got the Warriors to edge yeah, it yeah. out. Um, the Rabbits will beat the Roosters. Manly will beat the Tigers. Broncos v Storm. Doesn't really matter. Those guys are up there anyway, isn't it? You know what? I've got the Dolphins on this. Make the eight. Okay. So based on this, that's it's, a long way around to answer my question. It's it's Panthers, Warriors, Broncos, Storm, Rabbits, Cowboys, Raiders, Dolphins. Hmm. And for and against doesn't have any bearing on the eight. The Dolphins squeak in with thirty-two points. Uh, Manly are on thirty-one points. Yeah, I think thirty. I think yeah, I think around thirty-one is what the is is what the the limit's going to be too. Thirty-two um, might yeah. So thir- thirty-one for Manly, and then thirty for Parramatta, who don't make the eight because they're fucking terrible, and their window has slammed shut. That would be fucking. That would be ideal. Just ideal. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a fucking rough end of the season. Like the night, the Knights aren't a bad football team at the moment, but finished twelfth. It's good. It's 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 great. It just shows how compressed it is oh, it, from like from like thirteenth or fourteenth or you know thirteenth to first. Yeah. Like it's fucking nuts, which yeah. is great. I mean, it's the closest closest. It has to be the closest season in. Well, it's like the, you know when, when was it? Was the season before last when Penrith were like fucking twelve points clear of everybody else? Yeah. You know now they're like here. That it looks like the Warriors finished second in this. Yeah. Fucking hell, home home field advantage in the finals. That'd be amazing. And just oh, reward for the, the the sacrifices that they made during the during the Coviche. What a fucking turnaround! That's phenomenal. Yep, not tremendous. Turns out that we finally found the the secret source assistant yeah. coach for the Panthers. Fucking oath. Wasn't Trent. Wasn't Garth. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't Cam. <laughs> okay, who else fucking got out there? I can't <laughs> Was it just those three? <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's it. That's the games this week. So, um, uh, I still got one more. Oh, no, to go, it's not. Bro. We got one more to go. Sorry. Oh, how could I forget these two teams? The Gold Coast Titans take on the Cowboys at a Hope Solo Coliseum. The uh, Titans just some changes um, to to the way that the teams line up. Not so much uh, changes to the personnel. Uh, the Cowboys Nanai out. Uh, Neem is out. Jermaine Tanai Brown comes in. Sam McIntyre as well. And I just, I just don't think it matters. Even though, like, let's be real, large catalysts of Cowboys form in Jeremiah and I and Griffin Neem, yeah, out. But I just think that the way that the way that, like Scott Drinkwater it took him a little while to get back up there after that suspension that he had, but he's at the fucking peak of his powers now, he, and he, he's he just... makes Chad, he makes Chad good. Dare I say, yeah, just just proof that being being busy is half the fucking battle on a rugby league field. Yep. Like just that that fucking energy he brings to that team. There there hasn't been a player that brings that to the Cowboys since Thurston. And I'm not suggesting he's he's half the actual overall player that Thurston was. But just based on energy and enthusiasm alone, he's a fucking injection every time he's around the ball. Yep. So uh, in this case, though, um, yeah, North Queensland Cowboys, and like by fucking plenty as well, because yeah, way too strong for the Titans. Because not only have they been scoring, well, sc- scoring a lot of points, 
um, their defense has been great. Yeah, that's it. You know, uh, they they let Parramatta score a couple late um, to to make that game closer than it probably deserved to be. But yeah, I mean, a team like the Titans can score points, but fuck me, they can let them in. And I think the Cowboys are gonna put a put a fucking huge score on. I'm gonna go yeah. out on a limb. They're, yeah. they're gonna fucking maybe not fifty burger, but they're gonna fucking they're gonna beat them down hard. Not seventy four nil. No, not seventy four nil. So, so you know, if you're a Titans fan, and you're thinking of going to you know dress like a seat day, <laughs> maybe, maybe don't. Maybe, yeah, maybe let the seat do the work for you. <laughs> right, that's it. That was around. What was it? Around twenty two. In the bag. Get your tips in. Just listen to us. We got you covered. Says says the guy who only puts his tips in every other week, and the other two who probably don't even fucking do it ever. So, you put tips in, Glennie? No. No, I did not. <laughs> uh, Look, yep. I've, I've, got to, I've got to choose one thing to do between tips and ladder predictor, and I think you know where my <laughs> vote goes. <laughs> but, but, I mean, like, ladder predictor is really just an extension of the tips, though. Yeah. I, mean, I know. I'm not doing it. I'm not ticking it. As soon as someone can incorporate a ladder predictor into a tipping comp, I'm there. I'm yeah. fucking there. That would be incredible if like, that's a great fucking feature. I want to look at that because imagine if you have you got ladder predictor built in to the tipping competition, and then at the end of the year, all of the competitors you can look at how fucked some of their ladders are based on the, <laughs> things, based on the results they tipped, and you can just and you have these you have these fucking people with like the West Tigers in top four and yeah, <laughs> all this <laughs> random shit. <laughs> I said, look, he, the the sh- the sharks have thrown me out a bit. Their recent slump, yeah. Um, but but apart apart from that, I'm okay. I'm pretty happy. Right. So, anything else you want to get onto before we uh, wrap this one up, fellas? I think we've said it all, Nathan. I think we've said right. it all. All right. Well, in that case, thanks for listening. That was episode five twenty seven. This week in league com for all your socials and other things. Lovely. Don't forget to look out for uh, stepdads comment in a, a thread in the Facebook group and, and the Twitter account um, at the end of the round's action where you can Lovely. get your comments in to sum up your thoughts on the, the hot the hot button topics, your hot takes or anything else regarding some, the round of action. Some takes have been fucking red hot, I tell you. <laughs> I fucking tell you. Keep them coming. They're great. I like the right. new format. Yeah, it's good. And, and I've actually had people uh, message me privately as well saying the fucking flows really well and you know it's fun that you know when you got all that stuff at the end yeah like all the, so, so I guess it's kind of a, you know like the mailbag yeah that's what we should do we should we should just open up open up a mailbag for the Wednesdays as well I mean it doesn't necessarily always happen because sometimes Wednesday is the only day but um give people Fuck a chance yeah. to have you know Let's twice go. a week but yeah that's what more, we'll look at going, more bags the better anyway. yep yep that's it in the toilets of Cronulla fucking stadium allegedly Fucking old mate RLPA. <laughs> yes. Sniff, sniff. Alle- allegedly. Very, very allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. See so you. Oh, when are the tight? Where are the tick point? Are we going to do a members one this week, um, Glenny, with the game? Ooh, Any game companion? What's the, what's the schedule? It's Thursday night, isn't it? You said it was pub slot. Oh, it's Friday. It's pub slot. Like, I can do I can do pub slot, but maybe. Yeah. Jackson has basketball. At six, so that's right. We'll maybe look at the Saturday games. Is something you want to do? Are you free on Saturday at all? Um, maybe for the middle s- or the late? Yeah, maybe late. Yeah, unless Glenny, when are you going to watch the Tigers game? Because if you've got basketball, we could um, not watch it. Yeah, that's true. We could do that. Yeah, yeah that's potential. We could easily we could just hold it off and do it after do it do it later while the other game's going on and you know just catch up on that one after. That's it. Yeah. Right. Some West Tigers edging. It's gonna be glorious. West Tigers get the upset. Oh my over South Sydney. Nice. Helping uh helping out the big dog. The big D's <laughs> and the big dog, forming like Voltron. <laughs> I'm fucking the ladder predictor. <laughs> I love it. All right. Fuck yeah. Talk to you then. All right, boys. See ya.